Oh, so it turns out this is the hardest video I've ever had to do. <laughs> this is uh, like a sixth or seventh time that I've <laughs> attempted this because the other times I couldn't even make it past like five seconds. I think around the third time. At first, Lloyd was uh, sitting here on my lap, but ar ar around uh, third or fourth attempt at this video, um, he he was he was just like, "No, no, you're embarrassing yourself. I'm going over here now." So he's he's still here, giving his uh, emotional support because he's he's right here off camera. <laughs> he's just like, "I'm leaving with my dignity intact." So uh, for those who have been following our uh, uh, social media accounts or any announcements that we make. Um, our cat, Chloe, passed away yesterday morning. And plenty of you, of course, uh, have seen Lloyd on the channel. Uh, just not, a, not in this one, because again, he's, he's keeping about a, a, a three foot distance. But if you've been following, uh, our stuff for about the past 10 years, then surely you have seen Chloe pop up on there as well. And there would be people who'd say like, is that Lloyd or is that Chloe in the video? Cause they're, they're both Siamese cats. And, uh, but when you see them in, in, in person and everything, even when they're on, when they've been on video together, you can absolutely tell the difference. Cause Lloyd is about, for Lloyd is about four times Chloe. <laughs> Lloyd is uh he's he's significant he's significantly larger. He's he's uh Lloyd is Arnold Schwarzenegger, she's she's Danny DeVito. So you look at them together you can you can spot the difference. Uh, apart there's the, the, if they're apart th there is no telling the difference between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. But rather than um sit here and talk a lot about um, her death, I would rather uh, just share a few stories of her life with us over the past uh, uh, 10 plus years. When we got Lloyd and Chloe, uh, they, they were both a, a, a adults. Um, so Chloe, uh, would have been, the family that we previously got him from, uh, needed a good home for both Lloyd and Chloe because their kid had developed a, a very bad allergy. So they were looking for a home for both of the cats to go to. So we took in Lloyd and Chloe and they only kind of knew an average of what their ages were. And they put them roughly between about four and maybe six with Chloe being a little bit older. And so we, at the least, we put... Chloe's age around 16 or so uh, when when she passed. I uh, but like I said, uh, a lot of you have seen Lloyd on camera uh, certainly, but reason being for that, Lloyd is very much a diva. <laughs> Lloyd Lloyd does love being in front of the camera, whereas Chloe. More of a behind-the-scenes cat. Didn't really, you know, kind of care one way or the other about being in in front of the camera. More so just like kind of sitting there uh, behind the scenes and kind of just watching us do do our thing. Whereas Lloyd uh, is very, very chatty. Like Lloyd, Lloyd is a... <laughs> he, uh, he can break into conversation about, about any time, you know, it's with his eyes being very big and being very, very vocal and chatty on camera. Whereas, uh, Chloe was very, very quiet. Uh, the mo uh, Siamese cats are, are known for certainly being vocalists. Uh, especially Lloyd. Maybe, again, maybe not right now. I know you're just kind of chilling over there. But Chloe was very quiet. Very, very soft-spoken. Um, but not shy. She would, if company came over, Chloe, easily one of the sweetest cats I've ever seen in my life, um, Chloe would uh, instantly come out and investigate and inspect. She would... She would sit on your lap within a small amount of time of meeting you. It, Lloyd, on the other hand, 
Like, they're opposites in that regard. Like, Lloyd is easy to be in front of the camera and uh, never seems to have a problem doing that. Whereas Chloe didn't really so much like being in front of the camera, but, but off camera, Lloyd's the one who is a bit more, uh, even, not that he's even shy, but skittish a little. If a stranger comes in, he's, it's not that he's going to hide, but he won't. He'll, he'll, he'll take some time to get to know you a little bit first. If there's, if we ha would have a party in the house, Lloyd would certainly kind of keep to himself in his own area, whereas Chloe would kind of come out and be amongst, like, guests in our house. Even in moving into the few different houses, apartments we've had over the years, Chloe would be pretty quick to get used to everything. Not not that she would really like traveling, but she <laughs> she liked it better than Lloyd. Lloyd if, if Lloyd's loud regularly in a car, he might as well replace the horn. Lloyd yells and people think we're, you know, yelling at him in traffic. So <laughs> Chloe, even moving in, in here, uh, she... She would sniff around a bit, but wouldn't hide, really. She would take the things fairly well. So she's got somewhere to lay. She's got her food. She's got the cat box and the perches and everything. Within a little bit of time, you know, she'll make the place her own. Lloyd kind of hides out for a little bit uh, when in moving to a new place. He's got to really sort of slowly uh, inspect everything before he's like, Well, okay, I guess this is home now. <laughs> um, and she, because of that, though, uh, she, she would get into everything. Um, if you have, like, a glass of something sitting on the table, or food, or any kind of box that would have really about anything in it, uh, she she was she would be one of those cats or like you didn't want to leave like you know a bowl of soup sitting on the table or an uncovered drink uh, anything really cuz she would she would take any opportunity to get into that and it wouldn't just be food or uh drinks or anything like that like i remember i would be sitting back when i was editing from home if i'd be sitting in my office uh, Chloe would, uh, quite a bit, would, she, she's definitely a lap cat. Chloe would quite a bit be sitting on my lap, uh, a lot as I would be editing. And then also she would get up on the table and get around the monitor and like knock over the router, get up on top of my desk and like, no, my Batman bank, you know, like she would love knocking stuff over. Like even in glasses she was trying to get to, like if she was done with it, Boom, just knock it over. I think I've gone through at least a couple of E.T. glasses that she's knocked over. I'm starting to think maybe she also had a fear of E.T. Uh, <laughs> this is something she and Laura have in common. So th there would be... I remember Dave... Uh, Dave, uh, when he lived with me for a little bit, I remember him saying one time about how uh, he just found her in the garbage one day. Not, like, outside or anything like that. Lloyd and Chloe were not outside cats. Lloyd and Chloe were inside cats. Um, one time, just in our trash can in the kitchen, he'd be like, yeah, I went in and Chloe was just sticking her head out. I don't know, like, maybe she left her keys in there or something? Uh, <laughs> she was trying to get to something delicious, probably. Uh, <laughs> at the bottom, at the bottom of the trash can. But she would, uh, I mean, she, she just always liked, she always liked getting into things. And, uh, she would love her cat food, too. She'd eat her cat food up like that. She would, uh, you know, love any of the food that she put out for. But, you know, why settle for just the cat food when you could also have this banana peel that's sitting in there? So it was, uh, <laughs> that was a funny thing about her. Um, so I, she would also be really curious when it came to, um, any closed doors, not just like doors leading outside, but if it was like a door to the bedroom, a door to my office, a closet or anything, once that door would go open, she would want to get on the other side of it. <laughs> and 
there would be a few times you would accidentally get outside. Like I'd order a sandwich or something and we'd have to be careful because she could, she was sneaky. She could get like between your legs and, and everything. And there would be like once or twice where we wouldn't even see it, but right away, like we would hear her at the door and like, Chloe, come in here. I mean, we, we got really used fairly quickly upon getting Lloyd and Chloe to being on the lookout for like Chloe being an escape artist. Like it's fine, Chloe, if you want to escape into the bedroom or the bathroom. She'll try doing that too. But outdoors, you're, you're just not gonna like it out there. Or so we thought, because it was two years ago, and I remember writing about this online when it when it happened. Uh, Laura and I were visiting her family in um, Virginia for about a week, week and a half. And we had people looking after the house while we were gone. And when we got back, we couldn't find Chloe anywhere. And Chloe and Lloyd are certainly good at hiding. Even Lloyd, like, <laughs> you big old mountain. Uh, even Lloyd can, can find a pretty good place to hide every once in a while. Uh, Chloe especially, because Chloe, again, a little bit smaller than Lloyd. So, if we were looking for, uh, we would pull out like a bag of their, their treats and shake that around a little bit or tap a can of wet cat food and give them a little bit once they would come out. Like if, so when we would do that, they'd quickly come running out. Usually she'd be hiding underneath the snob chair. Like it got to a point where that would be the first place I would look, <laughs> especially when we were living in a place where like the heater was underneath that. Um, so we get back from Thanksgiving, that our Thanksgiving vacation, couldn't find her anywhere. Like when she wasn't coming out, when we were tapping the food, shaking the bag or anything, we knew something was wrong. We knew somehow she had gotten out. We didn't know if it was when we were packing the car or if it was during the week sometime when uh, people were looking after the house. We, we had no idea. So that when this happened, I was printing off pictures of Chloe and taped them all around the neighborhood, fences, telephone poles, a light posts, everything. It was late when we had gotten home, so none of the shelters were open, but the next morning I drove out to all of those. I was taking flyers, I was taking, um, I, I was taking them to, like, the shelters, PetSmart, um, really anywhere I could find, and it was around that afternoon when we were looking at missing pet pages over on Facebook that Laura had found her. Uh, this uh, really nice lady in this subdivision on another end of town in Springfield put up a picture on the, this lost pet site of Chloe. It, it was Chloe sitting there in her garage. And you could definitely tell it was Chloe. Chloe had like a, a unique look to her to her eyes and a very uh, small frame. But it was definitely her. And we noticed the date on the this post on Facebook was like a few days prior to this. And they had even said in the post like we hadn't seen her in a couple of days, which means she could maybe not even be in that subdivision anymore. And I went, I went down there and uh, was talking to the lady on the phone and gave her my number and everything. I went down there and posted up more flyers, like around on the the telephone poles and everything around around the subdivision. The thing is, like this means Chloe traveled far, because uh, this was on a way other end of town than we were living at the time. So. She made her way there at a, she made quite a distance between the two, which led us to believe, like, 
it at least kind of gave us a view of when she may have gotten out to get her from where we were living to uh, this neighborhood, which wasn't even near any place where we had lived prior to this. I remember when I was a kid and we had a cat named Slick. He, we moved and he was an outdoor cat and we had moved and he didn't, after a day or two, we couldn't find him. About a week goes by, the people at the previous house we had lived in at the time called and said, hey, yeah, your cat's hanging out here. So we went, we went and got him. Animals are amazing. <laughs> and so I, uh, again, I was putting up flyers and everything around this neighborhood and talking to different people. And there was a guy there going, yeah, I'll keep an eye out. I don't know why I sounded like you just then, Lloyd. It wasn't you saying this. It was a different old man. Uh, he was like, I'll keep an eye, I'll keep an eye out, do this voice. I'll keep an eye out, but I mean, there's a, there's hawks that hang around here and like snatching things up. I'm like, bro, <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm like, I won't tell Laura that. I'll keep that information to myself. I need to picture that in my head, God. So I was, hoping she was just still around this neighborhood. I was looking everywhere. I was looking in like uh, little pipes and shit, like uh, the, what do you call them? Like I was, I was looking in the grass and where there would be just like kind of water flowing through in the concrete. I would be looking in the, these little tunnels that went between the streets and couldn't find anything. So that night came around and I mean, we were a wreck. We were, we were a wreck then. We're more of a wreck now. <laughs> we were definitely a wreck then because we didn't know where she was. We didn't know we, we could find her. We didn't know if she was still alive. We didn't know if she was safe. We didn't know if she had made her way to another subdivision on another completely different side of town. So uh, Sarah and I were at a movie that night. I think this was when Coco came out and Sarah was like, you still want to go to this? I'm like, yeah, I, I want to get my mind off of, uh, things that I, I had my phone on me in case I would hear from, uh, this lady in the subdivision. And I did, um, I did hear uh, from her. She texted me and goes, hey, I, I just saw your cat uh, outside. I'm going to put a thing of tuna out there and see if she'll stick around. I'm like, oh my God, amazing. And we, I said to Sarah, I was like, hey, we need a bolt. We got to split over there uh, and get Chloe, which was not far from where the theater was at the time. It was just like kind of a minute away. And um, <laughs> I'm glad that she was found before Olaf's Christmas started and not after so that later Sarah and I wouldn't have to see Olaf's frozen Christmas twice <sighs> or we just time it out to show up 30 minutes after showtime and we went there and she was in the neighbor's yard and just came running up to me you know gave her all the hugs and kisses in the world wrapped her up in a blanket and it was like I brought her home. Uh, Laura came home from work early, and we're just uh, love hugs and kisses all around. What we were impressed by, she didn't have a scratch on her at all. And Laura and I go, well, I mean, she kind of get, gets into a lot of things she's not supposed to get into around the house, and. Uh, but she appears to be very street smart. We'll give her that. <laughs> Always was an indoor cat, but, uh, and was like, we, we didn't start letting her go outside, no way. But we were like, well, if she ever escapes again, we'll know what subdivision to look in for one. And also we know she can hide, run, keep safe and everything. Like seriously, not a scratch on her. She was healthy. Uh, she was glad to be eating a lot more uh, wet food when when she got home and we were all snuggled up together and, and everything. And we, I, I remember putting a picture of this on uh, Twitter or Facebook somewhere of me in the car with, with Sarah um, and Sarah sent Laura that picture 
and Laura was thinking in her head, because Laura was at work, and Laura was thinking, like, does this mean that they found her, or is she just for some reason sending me a picture of Brad and Chloe? Like, like I do, <laughs> like, I'm already sad. I was like, no, honey, it means we found her. <laughs> there would be some videos that she would, that she would pop up in. She was in one not too long ago with, uh, with Lloyd. I think she was in the That Darn Cat episode. Uh, and IMDB should probably say, but I think my favorite appearance of her on uh, camera, there would, there would be snob episodes where you could maybe like see her sitting in the background, older snob episodes, you could maybe see her sitting in the background. Uh, in the episodes where like our front door at the time would be in the background. And she would uh, um, be, be crawling across the uh, couch sometimes. Sometimes she'd be sitting behind the couch or she'd be sitting next to me. Uh, there, would be, there would be some old like, when I used to do, when I lived in this duplex and would do Brad tries just in the living room, kind of like set up kind of like now. Um, and when I would be shooting the snob in the living room too, then you could kind of see her walking in the background sometime or walking on the couch. There was one, this might be my favorite appearance of hers. Uh, it was uh, Brad, I think it was Brad tries urge the surge from Norway. And I was trying different kinds of urge a couple of them were in like a big uh can like a four loco size can and it was a couple of different flavors of urge and like just picture that i'm holding the can here and there's the couch behind me uh it's something i didn't even notice until later like when commenters mentioned it when i put the video up there is i'm sitting there holding this can and i opened it might have taken a I, yeah, I did. I, I took a drink, was holding it here, and Chloe was behind the couch. And she jumped up just on here. And the way that it was angled, the way the can was angled, and her jumping up in just the right moment, um, it made it look like she jumped out of the can. It made it look like I took a drink, went like this, and a cat jumped out of it. And I'm sitting here going, it's all right. <laughs> I'm not getting the smell out of my mouth. That was maybe my uh, favorite uh, of her on-camera appearances. And when we found her, from one of my other favorite memories too, was certainly when we found her after she ran away and gotten out of the house. That was another time... Uh, <laughs> it would be funny when she would get into Laura's things, uh, like Laura and I would be asleep, it'd be the middle of the night, and Chloe, we could maybe hear Chloe on the table uh, getting into the sink, and Laura would be like, Chloe, Chloe, like, Chloe, you're waking us up, you shouldn't be in the sink, we can hear you in there in the sink. Uh, it's waking us up, Chloe. We gotta be up early. And I remember kind of nudging over, going like, "Yes, it's Chloe that's waking me up now." <laughs> there was once, so there was once where, uh, this is a few years ago, I think, where again Laura and I are asleep, and I was woke up in the middle of the night. We maybe went to go use the restroom or something, and came back. And Chloe uh, got on Laura. Laura was sleeping on her back, and Chloe was about right, like, here, like, looking at her face. And I could hear Chloe, like, start to throw up. Uh, maybe she did find something in the sink. I heard Chloe start to uh, uh, throw up. And suddenly it was... Probably the biggest example of good angel, bad angel on my shoulder. <laughs> of, uh, no, Brad, you need to move her before she throws up on your sleeping wife. And then bad angel. That would be hilarious. 
And I'm like, all right, all right. I grabbed Chloe, put her down. Laura woke up. She's like, what, what, what's going on? And I go, I just saved your life, honey. You're welcome. <laughs> I know, I told her what happened and she had a good laugh. Um, got up and cleaned up what didn't end. <laughs> cleaned up uh, Chloe. Chloe's mess on the floor that luckily did not end up in my wife's face. <laughs> and, you know, we uh, put her, you know, kind of by her feet in between us and everything. And uh, she would live to try to throw up on Laura another day. <laughs> so when, um, when we got the news like a couple weeks ago, because, I mean, she was certainly getting older and when we got, I mean, she, she could have been older than we were told, uh, but at the least she'd be about 16, but she could even be like maybe 17 or 18. And we had gotten the news a couple weeks ago because we noticed, uh, we had noticed problems with her jaw and she was already kind of a skinny cat, but just got even more skinny. I mean, still was eating um, and, and drinking certainly. Um, but we had to get her in. We moved not too long ago and we got the cat set up at uh, a new vet. And the vet, there, there was a couple of different, um, there was a couple of different things going on. One was uh, she was having, she seemed to be having a problem with her kidneys, which is why she, she had started drinking a lot. Uh, a lot of water uh, over the past like week or so and it was because of that and the doctor did have medication for that and gave her a couple of injections but the biggest problem was she is diagnosed with, with mouth cancer and it was pretty aggressive like this had come on pretty fast and we uh, had set up another appointment for like basically what we were going to do is, is because there, there was nothing we could do about it at this point aside from a miracle happening there was nothing we could do other than to set up another appointment for her final visit and then just give her the best week of her life aside from maybe when she had her adventure over thanksgiving <laughs> I don't know how she ended up from point A to point B on that, her little adventure during our Thanksgiving trip, but what I picture in my head is kind of like the, the Simpsons when Santa's little helper went away and you just have that this map with just the dots kind of going, like tracking their movements and like maybe a car going by in her head out the window <laughs> and then like it, the little like dots trail off so she's like chasing a squirrel or something. <laughs> that's just that's how I picture how how it went, and uh, then she ends up at Mr. Burns's. We do live in Springfield, or did at least. Um, so we decided to give her just this great week. We uh, we took her outside, let her walk around in the grass. There was a, a fire alarm went off. Uh, which we have a feeling Lloyd might have pulled. <laughs> there was a fire alarm that went off a week or so ago and she was loving being outside then when we, <laughs> Lloyd wasn't. <laughs> uh, Laura had Chloe, I had Lloyd, we were holding on to him and Chloe was sniffing all around these tables outside. You know, we took her, uh, some days later, we took her out with these plants out there in the grass and let her sniff around the pool area. We took her into the lounge let her, you know, lay on the, these chairs and kind of walk around. We would take her on walks around the hallway. And I will say this, like, she, she got a good second wind to the point to where, I mean, we knew in our hearts, uh, she, that this probably is what it was, was a good second wind she had, maybe from some of the injections that the doctor gave her. Um, but she suddenly, like, like the swelling had gone down in her jaw. She was still, you could still tell it was messed up, but the swelling had gone down. She was eating a lot more and she 
was she was still drinking water, but not to the aggressive point that was indicating the uh, the other uh, organ failures she was having. So it almost seemed like it was kind of trailing back to normal a little bit. Um, again, like I would come home and she and Lloyd would come running up to the door. I would get the cat food. She would come running up. And we were hoping for a miracle. I mean, we really, really were. I mean, we knew that, it, that this is probably just a, a really good second win she's having. And, you know, we would let her, uh, <laughs> you know, if there would be like a plate with some sauce on it from dinner, uh, we Chloe would get up there and start licking it, and we'd be like, "Well, let her. <laughs> we're, we're giving her a good week." Uh, but when she took a turn for the worst, um, it was fast. I remember because she passed. She passed away yesterday morning. That whole night was rough. Like uh, earlier in the day, she was still kind of getting up and walking to her cat box. We even kind of ran up to the door at one point, but when she took a turn, it was fast. It was quick. And we were, she, she ended up making it through the night, but by morning, she passed away with all of us and we all got to say our goodbyes. Uh, the night before, like, Lloyd was letting her lay her head on on his body. Lloyd was being great. Um, they, her and Lloyd, they're not... The, the previous family had said that they're not... Uh, they don't have the same parents, but they grew up together. So they, always, they really did kind of have this brother-sister thing going on where, you know, they would get along great and then have days where they're like sniffing at each other and like batting at each other chasing each other around the house rough housing and everything but then you know again have days where it's like no they really do love each other they just like messing with each other all the time too lloyd when she was at her worst lloyd wasn't he wasn't messing with her he would be giving her baths he would be laying up next to her he would be sniffing her he would uh, again, let her lay her head on his body, because he's kind of a big pillow. Um, so, we, uh, we were all surrounding her, and Lloyd was here, me and Laura, and, oh, man, I made it this far. <laughs> I was on a roll too. I, again, like I said, like the, the few takes I tried before this, like I couldn't make it past five seconds without not being able to talk. <laughs> and then kind of walked it off, walked it off, walked it off. But Chloe was, she was a survivor and a fighter. Uh, from, again, from uh, when she had escaped that time a couple of years ago certainly proved she was street smart and definitely a survivor again not a scratch on her and when she took that turn there at the end um you know you know the past week and all that she was still fighting she was trying she was trying hard to hold on right until the end too like before she passed like we were uh, I mean, we were hoping she would go at home, um, as opposed to her being scared and being taken to the vet and not really knowing where she was. We, we wanted her to pass away quietly at home because, I mean, we had that appointment because we didn't want it to get so bad to where she was suffering or anything like that. Um, but she passed before the appointment. The, uh, uh a day before the appointment and so and she passed away quietly here at home on her blanket with all of us around saying our goodbyes and <clears throat> we told her we were like we're impressed Chloe that you made it this far um it's okay to it's okay to see the light we know you need to see the light right now um we won't stop being impressed if you walk towards the light right now 
So, uh, I'm glad that her memory is always going to be on in videos, in uh, the animated series where she, the character of my animated series, Lloyd, about where Lloyd's a private detective Siamese cat and Chloe is uh, his assistant. Everyone who's, we're always going to remember her. Um, whether it's people, uh, whether it's people uh, checking our stuff out or uh, the stories that we have, some of the stories that I've had now. <sighs> Bubba. Nope, I'm not going over there. <laughs> You're going to make me cry. <laughs> but I just wanted to, uh, you know, if you want to, I know I'm going to be looking at old pictures, uh, old pictures we have, and whole movies that we have, uh, that we've shot, but I just want to, uh, thank everyone for the kind words that you sent to us, uh, that you sent to me, my wife, um, our friend Marissa made this very nice artwork on Twitter, so, <laughs> come on over here, Lloyd. <laughs> no, I'm comfortable, and you're embarrassing yourself. <sighs> so I want to thank everyone for all the kind words that you gave us, and I hope you like some of these stories that I told. I hope you get, like, a good idea of, uh, who she was. Um, she and Lloyd are, um, among the heart and soul of everything we've done the past decade or more. And I'm glad that people are always going to remember her. I'm glad there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways for people to remember her, whether again it's the artwork or um, little home movies that we put up and everything. So <laughs> I should probably go. <laughs> can't start over now. <laughs> if I put in a cut, it'll just look weird. <laughs> mm. uh. Why isn't this whiskey? Get on that, McDonald's. So, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for watching. And, uh, Chloe, I, I hope we all see you again soon. I hope um, you're watching us from somewhere. I'm sad that you missed the uh, first snow that we had today, but when Chloe passed yesterday, I went online and noticed that the top thing trending was National Cat Day. <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, that's that's why she wanted to make it like uh, an extra night. She wanted to make sure she lasted long enough for, for National Cat Day. <laughs> she uh, wanted to make her mark on, on National Cat Day, so it's like, bravo, Chloe, again. We're very, very impressed, and we love you very much, and we miss you, and thanks a bunch, everyone, for watching, and I'll see you soon.